Last episode, I guess we could say, or last vlog, we were packing up and cleaning up the house and now it is fully empty. You can probably hear a lot of the echo. Everything has been moved out, so I thought I would show you guys what it looks like. And also maybe there's a few hints as well for if any of you guys do renovations, maybe you'll pick up some ideas. So if you see any lines on the wall, this is what the builders have done, I think, to mark the places where they're taking stuff off and redoing it. Also, if my voice sounds tired, it is because I am really exhausted. So tired. Anyway, this is the kitchen. Oh my gosh. And our freestanding dishwasher, Obi One Clean Obi. So this is what it uh, looks like right now. That's the new fridge over here. And this whole wall will be gone soon in the next few days. Over here, there'll be like a bar and cabinetry. We'll have some new doors there and this space will actually be utilized. This pin board is coming off, which I think there is something behind this pin board. James thinks nothing is behind it. I think there's something behind it. The previous owners were trying to cover up. The original pantry I actually really liked because I, I, I quite liked the shape of it, but unfortunately to utilize the space better, um, it didn't make sense to keep it like this. But you can see the old 70s paper in here. Super cool. Oh my gosh, this is so sad. It's a happy birthday candle. Oh my gosh. Hey. Papa Doms. I'll keep that for James. Part of me would love to keep some of this paper, but it, to frame, to kind of keep the memory of the old kitchen, but it really doesn't peel off very easily. It is so adhered to this. Like it's just so stuck down. I don't think there's any way you could get it off. I mean, yeah, that didn't come off too well. Maybe there's like a loose piece I can get. Also, I'm sorry if it's a bit gross, I'm chewing gum, but I've been told to chew gum to help the Botox to wear off more quickly. This is so stuck down. Okay, I was actually able to salvage some, so maybe we could frame this and preserve a little bit of history, even though it's kind of nasty when it's not in a frame. That could be kind of cool. And these are uh, our current cupboards. It never showed so much on camera how old this kitchen is. But I'm not sure if you can see it in here, but there's quite a few cupboards with just nails sticking out of them. It's a little bit dangerous. I think I prefer this paper. I'm sure some of you guys probably have the same paper. We might be able to frame this one too. The builders are going to take these curtains off, otherwise they'll get really dusty. So they'll take them down and put them in one of our bedrooms uh, tomorrow. And then they said they'd also carry the couch and dining table legs uh, to put away as well. So those don't get dusty. The dining table over here, that's going to be sanded back and re-varnished. I found a mother-daughter team to do that. Yeah, I'm really excited to see how that turns out. Then we've got some tops here to put over furniture and storage and James also got specifically some lounge covers so we'll put those over the two pieces of the L-shaped couch. But yeah, it's pretty, pretty empty. So this room's just full of appliances and stuff. I've taped up some of the cupboards that we don't want to open. And then this is what James organized. These are like zip doors. So the purpose of this is to keep out the dust. So they go all the way to the floor. That really should be taped down. Might ask James about that. This is our linen cupboard that I've also taped almost fully shut. I've left a few air holes because I thought I don't want it to get like mildewy and moldy in there. Like I think it should have a little bit of airflow, but mostly it'll be protected from dust, especially at the base. In our bedroom, you can see here the zip door. I think these were from Amazon. We've actually done a little bit of extra covering where we've got like the TV, Bobo and the bed fully covered. 
and then I've left more covering to put over the curtains, which I've instructed for them to be put on the bed, but I will come by tomorrow to check they're in the right spot. And then James also put locks on our doors. So these will be locked with a key. Um, my office is already locked. I just did not realize like how much prep there is for a renovation. Like I just, I thought it would be a lot less work, I think, because <laughs> it's mostly just kitchen. But I guess because we're doing renovations in different areas, it extends it all. And then we had to move furniture away from the sides of the house because it's being painted. But we've left this out here. So the tradesmen have a spot to have lunch um, and cleared this way because I'll need to walk through here and just like put everything else in the middle. Oh, it's such a glorious afternoon. It's so nice. I've got some pots ready to plant a couple of new things in. Oh yeah, and I got my lounge out. I don't know, if it was me working hard and doing physical labor, I'd wanna put my feet up. I've also got a few extra things here. I have a few snacks for the first day of work for tradies and also a few bathroom things because I'll be using our bathroom. So I got some toot paper and some cleaning supplies and stuff like that. I'm a big believer that if someone's working in your home or on your home and helping you, even though you're obviously paying them, it's really nice to make them feel comfortable and for you to think about like if they're taking a break do they have a place to sit or offering them water or just having a few snacks around like I just feel like it's just a nice thing to do. So we have tradie snacks we call them tradies in Australia tradesmen and I'll show you guys what we have. We have some fun protein bars violet crumble is a popular chocolate bar here snickers protein muesli bars, more protein bars, because protein bars like actually fill you up a little bit. So cookie dough, salted caramel. We've got a selection here. I think these will be okay out here overnight because I don't think the animals will get to them. And then shapes, these are like flavored dry biscuits, a real classic in Australia. And some honey soy chicken little biscuits. I thought these were potato chips, but these are like crackers as well. I think they'll see them if I leave them here. Well, hopefully they do. I'm putting them inside because I feel like the possums will get to the cardboard boxes. <laughs> okay, now we're in the bathroom. Super echoey, I've just messaged James. So, important toilet paper. So that's gonna be right next to the toilet. I mean, obviously they're gonna bring their own toilet paper, but it's nice when it's also provided. Some paper towel, cause you never know. And also I'm probably gonna to have to come back and clean the bathroom like once a week, because if there's people using the bathroom for 10 weeks and it's not being cleaned, that will be really in quite a state. Just bought some gloves and cleaning product, bin liners, toilet cleaner, hand sanitizer, and of course, hand wash. Okay, I think that should be good. And then folks can dry their hands and put it in this little makeshift bin if they feel the need to. Hey, well, I guess this is the last time you'll be seeing the kitchen like this again. So next up, I'll give you guys a tour of the place we're staying at. Say bye-bye kitchen. <laughs> As promised you guys, let's do a house tour. Welcome to the new temporary house. We're gonna be here for about 10 weeks. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. So let's come to the front door. All right, so this is the front door. You walk in here and this place was already furnished, which is great. It's usually used as I think a holiday house, Airbnb. James uh, brought a temporary hat and jacket stand, which is good. That's actually me collecting that stand is on my members vlog. No way! Yeah, it's pretty exciting content. I got the, I went to the house to pick it up. Dang! And then, welcome to the dining area, and which is actually the second office. James has just <laughs> set up this. Um, and what are we using this space for? Uh, just because, well, when we see the office in a moment down that way, there's only room for one computer. And if someone's like recording and someone else wants to work, we can just work here, like edit or whatever. So exactly, this is gonna be more of like an editing station, um, which is great. A little scuffed, because there's cables everywhere and it's dining chair and the dining chairs aren't that comfortable, so there's a cushion. Over here is the kitchen, as we like to call the kimchen. You know what's got good lighting? Oh! Whoa! 
So in real life, this is so white and bright. You know what the coolest part about this kitchen is? We have a dishwasher right here in the kitchen because previously we've been living with our dishwasher on the other side. So we've kind of got everything we need. Um, it's good to have done the dishes. We didn't feel like we had to clean up for you guys. <laughs> Hope you don't mind. And oh yeah, these are really different, but we thought this was interesting how these work. And also we've come prepared, oh wait, wrong one. We've come prepared with some of our favorite things such as our favorite mugs and my green tea mug. And one thing I found is I really love having a few familiar things around the place. So I'm so glad we brought those mugs. Shall we go upstairs, James? Mm. So this is cool. This is a non-dog area. So it's really nice. They actually put a doggy gate down here because the owners love dogs too. And knew we were coming with dogs. Did anyone else used to do that as a kid? And up here is a cinema room, I guess. A massive TV. This is crazy. So I've brought the Switch and I'm really looking forward to actually getting to play Breath on oh no, Tears of the Kingdom Zelda on here. But James, you were thinking of we'd watch a movie or something. Yeah, movie night. Yeah. I mean, look at this couch, it's massive too. It's a big couch. And huge bean bags. Yeah, these are pretty sick. Like, this is awesome. Whoa! <laughs> We, I was expecting beans, but these don't have beans in them. No, they're like big cushions, really. That's so weird. I've been meditating in the corner of the couch. So I have a blanket here and I sit like this and I, I look out the window where we can actually see some water. We probably can't show you guys, but we can see the ocean out there, which is beautiful. And then I do my meditation. There's also a deck out here, which is really nice. We watched a storm up here roll in, which is really cool across the bay. And yeah, we just don't have a room like this at home. So it's really nice to be able to use it. Welcome to the lounge room where we have, okay, I don't know if this pattern is just in Australia, but this pattern is classic Australian 90s, potentially Melbourne 90s style, but so many people have this fabric, it's iconic. It's actually on one of our favorite TV shows, Kath and Kim. And my grandparents also used to have the same couches, so it definitely feels like home. So excited because, check this out. <sighs> Don't you love that twine? And, <laughs> <laughs> this is, I've grown to love this. What do you think, James? You look great. You stuck? Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Okay. We also have some Franny things. This is Mr. Fox. She really loves Mr. Fox. Um, she also likes horns. She chews on horns. Um, so that's been good for her. Sometimes horns and sometimes wood. Yes, unfortunately. Oh, we've doubled up on think, this. Yeah, it's come off that one. This is such a great idea, having these. They just don't make furniture like this anymore, do they? Thank God. Welcome to Chowville. This is where Bowser and Franny like to sit and they guard the house and they're very good at it. Yes, aren't you? Hello. Oh. Hey, Franny. You're a good girl. They've got a nice creaky roof, just like the one we have at home, which is great. Definitely makes us feel like it's home, doesn't it? It's actually, it's so good because it's all under cover so they can just be out here all the time, not get wet. How's the Franny damage? Oh, I don't want to show that. Why? Because what happens if the owners watch? Well, aren't we going to ask them anyway? We're going to tell them. And the, what, the owners are going to find Deli Diary and watch Deli Diary. They might. I don't want them to, yeah, Franny did a boo-boo, so we need to sand it back. Hopefully they'll know what paint. Yeah, we're gonna have to is. tell them there's an issue anyway. So yeah, sand it back, fix it. Um, yeah, it was well. very naughty. Hey, Franny. <laughs> so cute. Hey, Bowsy. Oh, what's your sister done, Bowser? Oh dear. 
and I brought my plants here, so they're pretty happy, although I haven't watered them today. And we don't have a washing dryer, so we're needing to use clothes horses. However, when it's not raining, it was raining earlier today, we have a really cool clothesline called the Hills Hoist, which is an Aussie classic, so I'll show you soon. In here is just the laundry, you know, standard stuff in here. Linen cupboards and the main bathroom. So the toot is in here. Um, we actually have two toots. So exciting because we usually have one, so we're very excited to have a toot each. And then <laughs> this is the shower, mirror, vanity, bathtub that we probably won't use, to be honest. And then the main bedroom. Ta-da! So this is nice. There is an additional ensuite. I feel like a real estate agent. <laughs> ensuite in here, it's got a toilet and a shower. And then outside you can see the Hills Hoist. Ta -da! That is an Australian genius invention. It actually spins 360 degrees. So if it's windy, your clothes will spin and dry. And that's the backyard, which is really quite nice with a lemon tree out the back. Nice shed we don't go into, but it's there. There's two sheds. Two sheds. Oh! And Franny goes to the toilet behind that one. Oh yes, that's her chosen spot. And there's also um, a great split system aircon and heater in here. So it's nice we have a room we can really cool down if it gets too hot. And where is the other one? Living room and upstairs. Living room and upstairs. So we're pretty well equipped for that. Yeah, so that's... Oh, there's still more. There's two more rooms. This place is huge. And then we have the storage the room, storage room well, which is a bedroom. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. There's boxes on the floor. So, this is like a twin bedroom. This is just all the stuff that we brought that's just in here while we're not using it. Yeah. And this is really cool. The skylight. Whoa. Whoa. There we go. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh. oh. <laughs> just leave that there. Problems. <laughs> it's just and dangling now. And there. we'll not go in that room again. Yeah. <laughs> Clothing hamper. Very important. We like to have our separated into, into three sections. One clothes to be washed on a delicate wash air dry, two delicate wash delicate machine dry, and three regular wash regular machine dry. That's actually the delicate delicate delicates, but oh. it is delicate wash and no dry. So you just did it back to front. I did it back to front. <laughs> also there's no dry here anyway, so it doesn't make a difference. <laughs> And then last of all, one of the most important spaces, which enables us to still work, is um, uh. the main setup. So James has done a fantastic job setting this up for us. And it's very cool because there's actually, oh no, it's moved now. Well, sometimes there's two computers because I've moved mine into the lounge because I was doing some other work and you're going to record, so. Yeah. But yes, because obviously we, when we record, we need our own computers in here. It's just easier to have our own ones instead of using, you know, one and sharing it. Yeah, so we have uh, sometimes two computers sharing the monitors and a switcher James found, which is very cool because you just press a button and the monitors switch to the other computer. And it will use the same mic and camera and all that too. Yeah, so it's uh, pretty high tech stuff, I like to say. But yeah, thanks for setting this up, James. So that is the new house tour, temporary new house tour. I did promise you guys I would make you some matcha tea as well in my last vlog. So I thought I'd do that now and show you guys how I make my matcha. Okay, so first up, I'm not a pro by any means with matcha tea making, but I have been drinking it for about a year now because I feel like it energizes me throughout the day without increasing the amount of anxiety I feel, which is something that I've experienced when I have too much coffee. So usually I have equivalent to one coffee in the morning and then I'll have a matcha in the afternoon. And if you don't know what matcha tastes like, 
it's kind of an earthy, maybe even grassy flavor, depending on the powder that you get. And it's characterized by its really vibrant green color. So you might've had like matcha lattes before or matcha desserts, um, but when you're having a matcha tea, you can definitely appreciate the different brands and flavors of matcha and quite, to be quite frank, actually, a lot of the brands I've tried, I didn't like. So I really had to find ones that were quite high quality for me to enjoy them. This one's by D Matcha Kyoto. You can see here. And typically, the brighter the matcha, the higher quality it is. I don't know the actual name of this. I just call it my bamboo scoop. This is my matcha bowl, usually handleless, and has enough width in the top for you to get in with a whisk. So if you have any tips for me on how to make a good matcha tea, I would love to hear in the comments down below. But so far what I've researched is I put a couple of these in. Water that is about 80 degrees Celsius, just a touch, because we're going to make a paste with it. Then you use a bamboo matcha whisk traditionally. So I'm just going to turn this into a green paste. I just added a bit more water and now I've got too much water in there. <laughs> Oops, so give it a stir. Ideally you'd, you'd want a paste, but this is a, I'd say a bit more than a paste. And then I like to fill mine about half to three quarters of the way up. So I can then whisk it in a W motion without it going over the edges. So ideally, if you've done it right, you would like to get a little bit of froth forming. And yeah, I just go back and forth like a W. So you can see we're getting like a light froth on top. Honestly, this is not my best job, I think, because I messed up the paste. And also, I think the water temperature is a little off. But when you have a nice thick paste to start with, and your water really is around 80 degrees, the froth is a lot better. And then I just fill it up a little bit more. And the idea with matcha is that you enjoy not just the matcha itself, but you enjoy the ritual of drinking it and taking a moment to pause. I really love that part of Japanese culture where, from what I understand, they are really good at knowing to slow down and enjoy things a lot more and appreciate nature a lot more. And I think just the way of life and impermanence. And for someone like me who is, you know, riddled, riddled with anxiety and tends to move too quickly, I think. It's a really nice reminder to just slow down and sit down and enjoy a matcha tea. Uh, so cheers, you guys. Anyway, thanks so much for watching the vlog. Definitely subscribe if you haven't already, if you want to see more renovation things. I'm not sure what's gonna... Actually, I do know what's coming up next because I've already <laughs> got the other vlog half filmed. Up next, we have painting of the exterior of the house. We have demolition and electrical work going in. So you may see me smash a wall, no spoilers. Anyway guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you're having a lovely morning, afternoon or evening wherever you are in the world and I can't wait to speak to you all soon. Tak tak.